My, my background obviously is a prison governor. Most of you have kind of heard me speak at different uh, things, so I'll try not to bore you too much, but I used to run Parliament Young Offenders and now I'm on secondment in, in Education Scotland. And the intention around that is primarily personal development for me, but it's a real opportunity to look at how the justice and the education systems are different, are similar, could join up, could learn from each other, and, and you have no idea how, how fascinating it is um, and how much of a privilege it is for me to get an opportunity to look into somebody else's world and how important it is that as education professionals, you know, you, you have the opportunity to nurture the, the, the kids that, that are with you in a way which hopefully means that they won't end up in Pullman. And that's really what it's, what it's all about for me. It's about trying to share some of that um, experience in a way that will prevent youngsters getting into the kind of very traumatic difficulties um, that, that ultimately lead them to come into custody. So that's what today's all about. There are lots of other folk who are going to share their practice in, in ways that are um, you know, much, much better than I can do. Um, but really what I want to do is to get onto the kind of discussion bit as quickly as possible, because I, I really want to get an opportunity for everyone to share what we're doing at the minute, and then later on in the day, what, you know, having had the kind of opportunities to listen, what things could we do differently? And I know that Gail um, Novak is particularly keen for us to think about how that you know the kind of nurture and the aces stuff and the trauma issues are not separate and distinct issues they're actually all joined up and um, I forget who I was talking to the other day but certainly the boys that end up in Pullman don't say I've been terribly traumatized or I've I've had an adverse circumstance they just say I've had a horrible life you know so for them it's it's just a continuum of increasingly worse uh, worse issues um, but again psychology folk here can help um, join those things up for us not going to waste a lot of time on these slides because uh, most of this is going to be covered in an enormous amount of detail by Jill, um, who's got the kind of research background and, and uh, the expertise around this. But um, really just to say that clearly there are lots of, of reasons why young people end up in custody. Um, these are some of them, um, some perhaps more obvious than, than others. Um, most of what we're going to talk about today is the kind of bereavement and trauma issues, but um, we're also very interested in in, in a, an increasing way in things like brain injury and fe the impact of fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, and um, it is the case that although the numbers of young people in custody are reducing substantially, which is brilliant, and that will undoubtedly be due to do all the work that, that you're doing around reducing exclusions um, and probably the whole systems approach and getting it right for every child and all of these issues will be making a contribution um, to reduction in numbers. But the, the boys and girls who are still coming in are, I would say, increasingly, have increasingly acute needs and, and issues. So although there's fewer of them, um, their issues uh, by and large are worse. And the other thing to bear in mind is that although people talk about there's only 400 um, you know, young people in custody, that there are 20 admissions every week. So there's a, you know, the number of young people who are impacted by custody on an annual basis is much, much greater um, than, you, than you might initially um, think. So that's the first thing to say, and Jill will, will cover that. I suppose where we started in, in Polmont in, in terms of looking at issues around, around trauma was, was this kind of bottom issue really about resolving the underpinning issues, don't just deal with the behaviours or the presenting problems. And when I went to Polmont, I, I was told that the, the brief that I had was to um, help young people to learn and to increase their, their engagement in activity and you know, to make sure that, that they were reaching their potential. And it became really, really obvious really fast um, that we were not going to get anywhere near de dealing with any of that unless we, we worked out how to help them feel comfortable uh, in the first instance. And so Charlie and I, who's, who is, is head of psychology in Pullman, um, had a few conversations over coffee and we talked about um, how we could provide some supports for the youngsters to get them better positioned in order that uh, we could then increase their access to, to learning. And in many respects, I just wanted to share that with you because there are kind of similarities that I see with the education system. And, and please excuse my you know, naivety or ignorance, I'm, I'm not an educational expert, but I hear a lot of people in education talking about learners and learners with complex needs. I, I absolutely understand that there is a very specific definition for you around that. But I'm much more interested in the bit that goes around that, which is the child with social and emotional needs, and putting the child at the centre. Because until really, from 
from my perspective, from where I come from, until we address those issues, not that we can get them into the faith. And in addition to that, my experience is that children learn just as much uh, you know, from their family, from their parents, their siblings, and their communities as they do potentially at school. Um, and you're not going to address any of these issues unless you've got really good multidisciplinary partnerships and planning that bridge the gap between other sectors, which is why I'm interested in joining up to education and justice, um, but also in joining up work with families and communities. Uh, I know you know all that, um, but I have a particular, um, like Maureen, I have a great fondness for youth workers um, and the uh, kind of CLD things because they made such a massive impact uh, in Poland. Um, and Audrey and I were talking yesterday at Dundee about CLD and the importance of that as a protective factor. So that was what we kind of started off with. This is just some of the stuff that we, we developed in Holland, and, and some of which you're going to hear about today. So Carol's going to talk about the work that we did on domestic abuse with the boys, which was a part of our community safety approach. And Lisa and Nina um, are going to talk about the work that we did on bereavement and um, the trauma counselling associated with that. But the important thing, I think, about the my life with others concept, which is which is the way Charlie started to talk about it, was that it was much, much broader than some kind of intervention specifically around trauma. It was a whole establishment approach to getting the right kind of protective factors in place. And I, and I know in education you're doing some superb work um, with schools around you know whole school approaches to, to nurture, which are, are really, really super. And I'm really interested in learning about that so I can work out what a nurturing <coughs> prison looks like, and then pass that on to next PS. So as you can see now, lots of <coughs> opportunities for, for sharing. So it was a much broader concept. So whilst we did do lots of you know, mental health stuff and domestic abuse work, and even with counselling, and we also increased things like speech and language and art therapy, we also looked at uh, what I would call kind of broader issues like drama, music, opportunities to express yourself in different kinds of ways, uh, the importance of young people having a voice, parenting, absolutely critical, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the day. Um, and we set up a small inclusion area for the lads who are, who are at the greatest distance, if you like, from engaging in what we would describe as mainstream education um, within the establishment. So, so I suppose the only point that I want to make is that it wasn't one thing. It's about having all these things uh, joined up and making a contribution together. And again, I mean, this really just kind of reflects that. So what worked in practice, it was a whole establishment approach. <coughs> we did a lot of training with the staff group alongside Education Scotland. So working on things like childhood development, um, learning difficulties, bereavement and trauma. And one of the things that I wonder about is how well prepared teachers are in their initial training to understand the whole child before they get into the stuff about how to teach and what the curriculum is meant to be. <coughs> Um, as I said, I love youth workers, they're, they're as mad as a box of frogs, but they're just marvellous people. Um, <laughs> sorry, to the youth workers, they're bonkers, but so much fun. And, and for the, the kind of kids who end up in Poland, connecting in with that kind of informal style of learning and the opportunity to contribute is just really, really important. Um, I'm not going to go through all the rest. Jill will talk a lot about uh, things like effective contributors and the user voice and the opportunities for, for youngsters to kind of give back um, and these are all, you can see how these things resonate I think with the nurturing approaches that you're already developing in the school system. And that's it. So that's it, really just to kind of put in context why I wanted to have today, why I wanted to get different sectors together, um, why I think nurture is really, really important and um, please anything that you can do today to improve what we're doing so that uh, we don't get youngsters coming into Parliament um, would be just brilliant. Is that okay?